The first few chapters of 1984 are devoted to introducing the major characters and themes of the novel. These chapters also acquaint the reader with the harsh and oppressive world in which the novel's protagonist, Winston Smith, lives. It is from Winston's perspective that the reader witnesses the brutal physical and psychological cruelties wrought upon the people by their government. Orwell's main goals in 1984 are to depict the frightening techniques a totalitarian government, in which a single ruling class possesses absolute power, might use to control its subjects, and to illustrate the extent of the control that government is able to exert. To this end, Orwell offers a protagonist who has been subject to party control all of his life, but who has arrived at a dim idea of rebellion and freedom. Unlike virtually anyone else in Airstrip 1, Winston seems to understand that he might be happier if he were free. Orwell emphasizes the fact that, in the world of Airstrip 1, freedom is a shocking and alien notion. Simply writing in a diary, an act of self-expression, is an unpardonable crime. He also highlights the extent of government control by describing how the party watches its members through the giant telescreens in their homes. The panic that grabs hold of Winston when he realizes that he has written down with Big Brother, evidences his certainty in the pervasive omniscience of the party and in the efficiency of its monitoring techniques. Winston's diary entry, his first overt act of rebellion, is the primary plot development in this chapter. It illustrates Winston's desire, however slight, to break free of the party's total control. Winston's hatred of party oppression has been festering for some time, possibly even for most of his life. It is important to note that the novel, however, opens on the day that this hatred finds an active expression. Winston's instinct to rebel singles him out of the sheep-like masses. Unlike the rest of the general public who do not find the party's contradictions problematic, Winston is aware of himself as an entity separate from the totalitarian state. He realizes that writing in the diary has altered his life irrevocably and that he is no longer simply another citizen of Oceania. In writing in the diary he becomes a thought criminal, and he considers himself doomed from the very start. Thought crime was not a thing that could be concealed forever. Sooner or later they were bound to get you. One of the most important themes of 1984 is governmental use of psychological manipulation and physical control as a means of maintaining its power. This theme is present in Chapter 1, as Winston's grasping at freedom illustrates the terrifying extent to which citizens are not in control of their own minds. The telescreens in their homes blare out a constant stream of propaganda, touting the greatness of Oceania and the success of the party in ruling it. Each day citizens are required to attend the Two Minutes Hate, an intense mass rally in which they are primed with fury and hatred for Oceania's rival nations, venting their own pent-up emotions in the process. The government, meanwhile, expresses its role in an outlandishly dishonest fashion, as seen in the stark contradiction between the name and function of each of its ministries. The net effect of this psychological manipulation is a complete breakdown of the independence of an individual's mind. Independence and will are replaced by a fear of, and faith in, the party. Indeed, individual thought has become so alien the population accepts that the party has made it a crime. 